Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be looking at the 31st problem from the CP31 sheet by TLA eliminators under the 1000 rated questions. Let's go. So I'll move on to my sheet over here. I've ticked off 1000 rated and I'll go to my 31st problem, reverse a substring. Let's open this. You are given a string S consisting of N lowercase Latin letters. Let's define a substring as a continuous segment of a string. For example, ACAB is a substring of the string. It starts with position three, ends with six and so on and so on. You have to choose exactly one of the substrings of a given string and reverse it. That means, let's say you choose something from L to R range, you reverse it out and this becomes S, R, S minus one, so on till SL. To obtain a string that is less lexographically. Note, that is not necessary that you have to obtain the minimum possible string, very, very important. Okay, if it is impossible to reverse some substring of the given string to obtain a string that is less, print no, otherwise print yes, and any suitable substring. String X is lexographically lesser than string Y. If either X is a prefix of Y or there exists I where I is from this to this range, such as X I is less than Y I and all the J below that or before that you can say X J is equals to Y J. All right, great. So let us quickly generalize this problem. Okay, so they define two, three words over here. We'll take them into uh, consideration. They are saying that they will give you this variable n, that is the size of the string. And then there is going to be a string s, which has letters, lowercase Latin letters, s1, s2, s3, s4, so on till sn. I have been given a string. Now, what is the target? I have to reverse some segment of the string, or to be specific, some substring of the string. Substring basically defines some continuous segment that you pick up that captures the characters from the string. So let's say I pick up something like from s2, and I keep on moving to let's say S4. So this portion that I just extracted is continuous and it is a substring. I have been told that I can pick a substring and I can reverse it. So let's say I pick up this much segment and I'll reverse this out. So this becomes S4, S3 and S2. And anything before that, anything after that still remains the same. So I pick up a segment, I reverse it. And the target is when I reverse it, I want to create another string. This will be something like an S dash string where S dash is lesser than S lexicographically. Okay. If I can do this, I will print a yes and I will print the string S. And if I cannot do this, I'll print a no and then I don't print anything. That means no S dash is possible. Okay. Now let's quickly define what is lexicographically. Lexicographically best definition comes from dictionary. All right, all those who are beginner to this part. Imagine a dictionary, imagine a word that comes before some other word in a dictionary means that word is lexicographically smaller. Or a very, uh, you can say generalized definition is, let's say there is a string S and there is a string S dash. Some portion of that particular string from prefix, you can say matches, let's say this much part this much but matches. And then there is one letter, let's say there is a letter over here as C, and then there's a letter C dash, the first deferring letter, that is if the letter over here above is C, and this is C dash, and if C dash is lesser than C, so the first deferring letter from the left in S and S dash, which don't match, actually define which is larger, which is lesser. So if C dash over here is lesser, that means S dash is lesser than S, lexicographically. This is the definition. All right, I'll give you a quick example. For example, write A, B, C, D, E, and then write A, B, D, C, E. So the first place where the letters don't match is actually this location. And over here, D is actually greater than C. So I will name this string, let's say this is string A, okay, this string A, and this string, this is string B. So I'll name that A is actually lesser than B because the first location where the letters did not match, A string was smaller or A's letter was smaller. Okay, I hope this part is clear. Let us look at the test cases and see what answers are given. So over here, the first case, A, B, A, C, A, B, A. Let me quickly note this down. A seven lengthed string, A, B, A, C, B, C, A, B, I think. Yes, C, A, B, A. What is the answer? The answer is yes. And they are saying you can reverse a string from two to five. Now, when I want to reverse a string from two to five, over here, they have given you a one base indexing. If this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So two to five basically means this portion. Let's reverse this. 
A and then this much portion is A, C, A, B and then this is B, A. Now if you carefully observe, the first differing letter in these two strings is actually this part. This is B, this is A, it doesn't match. Before that, everything is matching. So I'll say if this is S and this is S dash, S dash is lesser than S. Why? Because this letter A was actually lesser than this letter B. Okay, I hope this makes sense. That is why the answer is yes. And I know this is a correct thing to print. All right, so I think we have understood the question. You can also go through the second case once to understand some sort of an idea if you want and pause the video. Else, let's begin. Let's actually discuss the time complexity that is expected in this problem. So I've been given one test is two seconds and then there is no test cases. I have been directly given an n variable that is the size and that is three into 10 raised to five order. So I can say that one test allows me two into 10 raised to eight order of operations. And I'm looking for n being three into 10 raised to five. That means an O of n solution is promoted. Even if I go O of something like n log n, that is promoted, it's fine, it's going to work. A little larger, even n square root n, I think, is going to work. But as soon as you go to something like n square or something, that's not going to work. So come below, if you create a constant solution, that is also working fine. So solutions like this are promoted, and solutions right above that are not going to work. This is my expected time complexity, and this gives me a hint, as expected, because now I don't want solutions that are brute, I don't want that are in n square order. Anything below that is what I'm looking for. This is a good starting point. All right. Now, let us move on to the final discussion of the problem. So first of all, let us try to understand that problems where yes and no comes into picture, it's very intuitive that you figure out cases or try to see, first of all, what are the no's one, okay? Or what are the impossible ones? So I'll begin off as a first intuition that let's try to figure out when is the answer obviously no. I can have a very small idea over here. If let's say the string has all the letters same, for example, the string looks like A, 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 A. Now pause the video, tell me, if you take any substring from this and you reverse it, will the string change? Of course, no, right? Because all the letters are same. So pick up anything, pick up these two, pick up these four, pick up the whole string, reverse it. The letters still remain same, the string still remain same. So S, if it looks like this, S dash is also going to look like S, which means S dash will never be less than S this means that if the string has same letters, answer becomes no. I hope this is a valid case. I hope this makes sense. Let's move on. Second intuition, just building on top of this. Now, why did we say exactly that no other portion of reversal helped? It's because of course that the strings remain same. But one more idea, what if the string had all the letters in ascending order? Meaning, let's say you had something like this, A, 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 then B, B, then C, D, E, E, F, something like this. Carefully observe, if you go from left to right, the letters are increasing, as in A, then it remains same A, then A, then B. Now B is larger than A, then you continue to B, then C, C is even larger, then D, even larger, E, even larger, and then F, even larger. So either the letters are remaining same or they're upping, the same up, same up, something like this. So if this happens, there's a very strong idea over here that I can say, still no S dash is possible. Why? Because if you pick up any segment from here, let's say you pick up this segment, let's say you try to reverse this segment, C, D, E. Now you very well know that in this segment or any segment for that matter where you have picked up, the first letter to the last letter, the order is increasing. As soon as you reverse it, the order will decrease. You will have E come forward, then D, then C. And it's very obvious that this letter is going to be larger than this letter. This letter E is larger than C, which can be generalized for all cases. This means that no S dash is also possible over here. So this also creates a no case. The string fully ascending in order also creates a no structure. By the way, you could have also said this is a subset of the first case also, because overall also the string is fully ascending only. The letters are either same or they are only increasing. In this case, they are all same. So these two cases should be fairly sufficient to bring R to our final, final observation. That is, if I covered everything that was constant, all letters same or constant and increasing a little bit, then the only thing that is left is a mix of maybe increasing, decreasing, or let's take the best case. What if the letters all decrease? What if something looks like this? Let's say S looks like, let's say D, C, B, A, everything decreases. Now I have a very clever idea. Let's just take up, for example, this much portion. If I reverse the whole string, you of course are going to land up with the letter that is A, 
B, C, D. A is lesser than D. That is the first letter. So you know you have worked out. Yes, is this a S dash ring? It is. But let's take our idea even a notch further. Now in this case, I minimized myself that I had a string that is fully decreasing. Maybe I'll give you a case. What if it was only decreasing till this much portion? What if after this B, this had C over here? Now it's only decreasing up till this much portion. That is D, C, B decreases, then it decreases again. Now what? You're still good to go. Why? Because imagine if you just take this much segment of three length, again reverse this B, C, D. Again, you have B lesser than D. So is S dash created? Yes, it is created. Great. Let's even take it up a notch. Well, how about I decreased my length of the string that was decreasing all the time to a little lesser notch. Let's say only DC is increasing, uh, sorry, decreasing. And after that, this is something like this, D, E. So DC comes down and then D again picks up. Still, I can guarantee you can create an answer. Why? Because the segment of DC is going down. If I just reverse it, it goes up. So bring this reversal, this becomes CD and this is S dash and this becomes DE. So you know now again you have actually created one such portion of segment where the letters have not matched and the letter in S dash at that location is lesser in S. This is actually a very clever idea. I can actually propagate this or generalize this by saying that from our third case, my argument is, let's write it over here. If I can reverse a segment of L equals to two only and create a stash, this will be the best working case. Okay, because if you're able to do for two segment, then you don't need to worry about larger than two, three, four, five, up to infinity, it doesn't matter. But if you're not able to do even for two segment, then it's not possible, right? Because if no two segment length strings actually help you create an S dash, then lesser than two is just a single letter, right? How will you reverse a single letter? It won't affect. So you need at least two. Now you can just check for all those two length segments. If anything works out, you can just quickly reverse it and you have an answer. This is also conditional to the fact that in the problem it was said, you don't need to obtain the minimum possible string. Any string works as long as it is lexographically smaller than the string you already had. So it doesn't matter if it's the most minimum guy, it's still going to work. All right, and this is the idea. Let's actually quickly uh, see this on one of the cases. Let's I'll talk about the first case only. You had A, B, A, uh, then I think you had D and then A, B, A back. I think this was middle one was D, no, it was C. Let's take this, this was C. Now I don't need to worry about different segments of two or more length or different lengths that I have. Just let's check two, two lengths, two, two lengths over here. And whichever segment I find, which is of two length and has the potential capability to get reversed and get a better case, I'll do that. So if I look at my first two length segment over here, this does not have the capability, why? Because A is lesser than B. So when I reverse it, B will come forward which means this is not right because if B comes forward, then B as compared to A is larger. So no, this segment does not work. Let's see the other segment. Oh, this segment actually works. Yes, if I reverse this out, B right now is larger than A. If I reverse this, A comes before B and A when compared to this B quickly solves my value. So yes, let's do that. This becomes A, A, B, C, A, B, A. Everything is rest is constant. So isn't this the answer? Yes, this was the answer. Now there can be multiple answers also because they have said that you cannot or do not want exactly the lowest possible guy, you could have also done this for this segment also, CA. Just reverse this, A comes forward now compared to A and C, everything before that would have been constant and CA would have matched and A being the lesser letter, overall S dash would have been lesser. So it's fine, whichever segment you want to pick up, you can do. It's just about finding that correct segment. And if no segment works out, print a I blindedly answer no. Okay, now if I go back and check the first and uh, second case also, our idea definitely checks out over here because over here, you could have not found any two two segments which were reversible, which had this condition true. Over here also, it was not possible. You pick up these two, they are equal. You pick up these two, one is lesser, previous one is lesser, so it's fine. And though so on, so on, everything was fruitful over here, everything was working over here. But then in these cases, you were able to find this one guy of two length segment where D was actually lesser than C, so this worked out. Sorry, D was greater than C and this worked out. All right, so this is the whole idea. Let's quickly write a pseudo code for this. What will I simply try to do? 
I'll try to run a for loop. Okay. And for every S of I, I can see that is this letter that I'm standing at larger than the next letter. If the current letter that I'm standing at is larger than the next letter, then this segment from I to I plus one can actually be reversed, bringing S of I over here, I, sorry, I plus one over here and S of I after that, which means S of I and S of I plus one is going to be the first differing letter. And that creates my overall S dash new string lesser than, sorry, lesser than S. So I would have printed a yes. Okay. As soon as I found this condition to be true, if I came out of the loop, did not find this to be true, I'll print a no. Great. So I hope the problem is clear. I hope the pseudo part is clear. Let's quickly look into the code structure. Just how I imagine the pseudo to be, this is going to be the code, two liner code. Let's take an input of n, no test case variable needed, string s, take the input of string. Then I have a flag variable that controls whether I was able to do this or not. Let's run loop from zero to less than n minus one, by less than n minus one, because I want to check i and i plus one, so I don't want overflow. Let's check s of i greater than s of i plus one. If that is the case, let's print yes. Let's print i plus one and i plus two. Why i plus one and i plus two? Because I want one base indexing to be printed because the answers were expected from one to n. So if i and i plus one satisfy, that means i plus one and i plus two is something I want to print. Flag becomes one and I break. Now, if I come out of this for loop and flag was always zero, that means no condition fulfilled. That means I'll print a no. If I flag becomes one, then I would have printed a yes and this answer would have been done and dusted. So this handles all my cases, all right? Great, so I think this brings us to the end of our problem. A very clever idea of substring part. I hope that should be clear. I hope this also clears the lexographically thing that we normally get confused in. Let us quickly discuss the time complexity in this. You would have an n order over here to take the run loop over here, n order over here roughly to take the input also of the string s. And I think that is all needed. So I can write my time complexity to be O of n. Okay, and O of n means O of three into 10 raised to five order which is great. This was something optimum we could have definitely uh, created and string uh, sizes of n. So the space complexity also comes as O of n. All right. So this is all that is there in the problem. I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching.